Hello and welcome to Corbett's Comments. God's Word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. I'm Dr. Otis Corbett and I invite you to explore a portion of the Bible with me today. Specifically, let's explore how to reach our potential in Christ as I share a word about the blessings of obedience as I comment on 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 22 through chapter 2, verse 5. This passage reads, Having purified your souls by obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart, since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God. For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers, and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord remains forever. And this word is the good news that was preached to you. So put away all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and, and envy and all slander. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God chosen and precious, you yourselves like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Have you ever heard of the Flat Earth Society? They refuse to believe that the world is round. It affects how they act, and it affects what they think. Some of these folks believe that NASA fabricated the moon landings as a hoax. And so what we need to see is that when we learn to obey the truth, it also changes our lives. It affects us. And Peter tells us how that happens in our text for today, which was 1 Peter 1, verse 22 through chapter 2, verse 5. The first thing we see is that when we obey the truth, it changes our attitude. Attitude is a key component of life. Is your glass half full or is it half empty? Well, it depends on what you consider that to be. It depends on your attitude. On the other hand, someone who is a supply chain expert may look at what your situation is and say that you have twice as much glass as you need. It's not half full or half empty. Your glass is too big. It's a different way of looking at things. It's a different attitude. Our attitudes before obeying the truth are often poor. However, when we obey the truth, it improves our attitude. We see how God is blessing us through obeying the truth. We see also uh, God's approval as we obey the truth. And we feel like we're doing the right thing when we obey the truth. Obeying the truth changes our attitudes. It also changes our appetites. See, we often have preconceived notions of what is good. Sometimes we will see a dish and we'll say that dish must taste bad because it smells different, it looks different. What we need to sometimes do is just try it because sometimes when we try it, we'll like it unless it's eggnog. And if it's eggnog, it's not good. That's my personal bias. But when we get a taste of something good, other than eggnog, we want more other than buttermilk. We want more. For example, if you go to an ice cream shop and they give you free samples and you enjoy the sample, then you want more of that delicious vanilla ice cream. So the same thing is true about God's Word. We can develop an appetite for it. And when we learn to enjoy do enjoy it, it becomes a great blessing to us as we obey the truth. But the fact of the matter is, God's Word is so different than what we see around us, it's sort of like spicy food. God's Word is something of an acquired taste. We may read it and not understand it, but as we read it and let the Holy Spirit teach it to us, then we realize that it is something good. We taste it and it's good. And so it changes our appetite 
for uh, things in our lives. Instead of desiring things that are not holy and acceptable to God, we start to desire things that are holy and acceptable to God. So obeying the truth, it, it changes our attitude. It changes our appetites. It also changes our approach. Baptists in particular, but all kinds of Christian people tend to be very stubborn. And we often bang our heads against the wall. And what I've learned is when I bang my head against the wall, it feels so good when you stop. We need to try to find acceptance and satisfaction, not in the wrong places, but in the right places. You know the song, looking for love in all the wrong places, and sometimes that is our case as well. We really only find acceptance in God, and we only find true satisfaction in obeying the truth. So it changes our attitudes. It changes our appetite. It changes our approach, and it also changes our acceptance. We cannot please God. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. There's none uh, that is righteous. No, not one. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And normally, we don't want to please God. We may be sitting down on the outside, but standing up on the inside like the little boy that was put on time out in the corner. But when we obey the truth, we can please God. And when we obey the truth, we can also be pleasing to God's people and the other people in the world. So as we obey the truth, we grow. If we have tasted Christ, if we are in Jesus, if we have the Holy Spirit to help us, as we obey the truth, we grow. Obeying the truth changes things. Are we ready for a change? Are we tired of our everyday life? Are we tired of trying to succeed or trying to please God and people and failing? A really strong part of the answer to that issue is obeying the truth. Are you ready for change? Are you ready for change? Obey the truth. Thanks so much for visiting with me today. I'll be back soon with another word from the Bible that we can share together. Every blessing, I'm Dr. Otis Corbett.